Telecom TV, where ICT connects. Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick, and we're reporting from Bad Homburg in Germany, a little spa town, and we're at the SDN and OpenFlow World Congress 2013. And I'm talking with Kash Sheikh of HP Networking. Kash, you're very welcome. SDN has been hyped, and NFE has been hyped a lot over the past couple of years. You know this industry, the way suddenly new mnemonics, new concepts suddenly appear from nowhere. This has been one of them, and there's been a lot of hype. Now, though, things are settling down. This reality is beginning to actually obtrude onto all the hot air. Um, you're seeing this from HP's side. What do you regard as being the, the challenges that face SDN, the barriers that there are to its adoption in the first place, and then following on from that, the benefits and where it's actually being put in place now? Now, all good questions, Martin. So first of all, SDN has some challenges, like any other new technology, and it has some barriers or in inhibitors to adoption. So um, let's talk about challenges. The, challenge, the first challenge that um, SDN is going to solve is the manual and device-by-device -device configuration that is required in the current traditional network, which really takes up time and slows down the process for the network managers and takes a lot of time in the deployment of new application to create new business models. Um, SDN promises to solve this challenge. The barriers to adoption for SDN are the closed nature of proprietary SDN solution. Because one of the benefit promised by SDN is the openness and the interoperability that it can deliver. But that is only possible when the vendors adopt open standard-based technologies so they can interoperate with each other. And last but not least, the non-existent marketplace. Because networking requires a very specialized go-to market. So even if there are developers or partners who want to develop SDN applications to solve the challenges, how do they monetize it because of the specific go-to-market? So what we have done at HP, first of all, we've had the leadership in adopting standard-based technologies. We adopted uh, uh, OpenFlow, which is one of the protocol that enables SDN much earlier than anyone else. In 2007, we started working with Stanford. In 2008, we had OpenFlow implemented on our switches. We now have 50 switches that are capable of OpenFlow. That's the broadest portfolio of OpenFlow-capable switches in the market. From the customer perspective, the benefit is when they are buying the switches and routers from us, it provides them investment protection and enables them for SDN. And to address the challenge of close uh, proprietary solution, what we are delivering is, first of all, standard-based technologies, such as SDN or any of the overlay technologies that enables SDN at the infrastructure level. Then we recently introduced our plans to um, provide software development kit for the developers or partners that want to develop the application based on our controller to solve the business challenges. Because SDN aligns the network to the business challenges and, and provides you the opportunity to create these applications can solve the challenges. So now the developers can develop the applications. We will provide them the infrastructure with the virtual lab, APIs, and the software uh, tools to be able to develop these applications and test these applications. Now, if you are a developer and you are wondering, you know, I can develop these applications, which is good. I have an innovative idea, but how do I monetize it? Because, as I said, there is a very specialized uh, go-to-market for networking. Now, what we have done is we have introduced plans to introduce industries first as the app store. Very similar to the uh, smartphone app store concept, where as these developers develop these applications, they will be able to monetize it on our app store. We will keep a portion of the revenue. Majority of the revenue will go to these developers. So there are challenges, but at the same time, there are opportunities. And we have an overall strategy at HP to address these challenges and get, and get in front of it and really take SDN mainstream. What about 
genuine, real, real-life user cases. Can you give us some examples? Absolutely. So these applications, the SDN application that I mentioned, are really the key to solving the challenges with SDN. Right. So we have introduced applications such as Sentinel security application. It's one of the applications that provide security in the customer environment. So for example, we have a customer such as Ballarat Grammar in Australia. What they did, they deployed our controller and this application to provide security for the students that are bringing in their own devices. So as their students are bringing out the devices, this application proactively blocks, check the health of the device as in your smartphone or your iPad, and protects the network proactively rather than reactively. So what it does is really from the business model perspective, it changes the business model. Rather than IT and the network guys spending 70% of their budget and time on maintaining the network and the infrastructure and only 30% on innovation, they can shift the innovation budget by providing services like this I mentioned with Ballard Grammar where they are now proactively protecting the devices and allowing the students to bring in the devices without having to react to the security threats. That's one of the example of a real life where SDN is changing the paradigm. You mentioned just then, Cash, business models. That was one of them. How is SDN changing business models overall? Have you got any evidence of what's happening yet? Yeah, there, there are several ways. So one of the ways is SDN provides opportunities, new business opportunities. For example, you know, in, in the past, when somebody had an idea, innovative idea, and you wanted to solve or create a new uh, network innovation, what you had to do was go to the venture capitalist and get $100 million, $150 million mm -hmm. funding yep. to be able to create the innovation. And why was that? The reason was you had to have the hardware to be able to test your applications and develop applications. Now, we've removed that barrier to entry. With this software developer kit, two guys in the garage, if they have an idea, they can download our developer kit and start developing application. And for the hardware, they can access our virtual lab, which is actually the hardware infrastructure of the back end. And once they develop it, they can monetize it on the App Store. That's entirely new business model. Or maybe a partner, uh, such as we are working with Microsoft. They have this application, Microsoft Link, for collaboration. We have developed an SDN application with Microsoft Link, which will provide better user experience for the users that are using Microsoft Link. Now we have an opportunity to monetize this application, partnering with Microsoft, new business model. And last but not least, new business model for the customers, as I mentioned, within IT, they can provide new services and shift their resources. So the resources that are being used currently for just managing and maintaining the operations of the network can be shifted to providing new services, such as the security service I mentioned with Ballard Grammar School. So there are a lot of new opportunities and business model that SDN is enabling. Fine. How do you get started? That's I'm just coming to you and saying, right, I'm going to get into SDN. What have I got to do? There's a lot of confusion out there. I don't quite fully understand it. Where do you begin? That's a very good question, and I get this question a lot in my customer engagement. And the benefit we have, as I said earlier, we started much earlier with SDN and OpenFlow. So we've had experience going through with the customers based on the engagements we've had. And that's a common question I get, especially with customers who are still evaluating and considering deploying SDN. The first thing we tell them is protect your investment. As you are upgrading your network, let's say you acquired a company and you're expanding your network, make sure the switches and the router that makes up the infrastructure, the network infrastructure, is capable of standard-based technologies and protocol that enables SDN. Because you may be ready for SDN now, but you may be like the majority of customers which are still evaluating, but you want to make sure that the equipment you're buying is providing the investment protection. So you can turn it on now, or you can wait for two years. And then at that point when you turn it on, you don't have to rip and replace. It's just an incremental uh, investment 
that doesn't require that if and replace of your invest, uh, investment and the infrastructure. Final question to you. We've been talking about SDN, which is what we were really going to be talking about. Of course, SDN is usually in partnership with NFV. Now, they are complementary, uh, but it doesn't mean to say they both have to operate together at all times. Nonetheless, do you agree, do you think that SDN and NFV together are a winning formula rather than SDN or NFV on their own? Absolutely. SDN and NFV are the winning formula. They are complementary. In fact, they combined deliver the sum of the two deliver then greater than the sum of the individual. As in 1 plus E1 equal to 5 actually <laughs> because of the benefits <laughs> provided by NFV and, and SDN. NFV is a way for the service providers to get the network functionality on standard x86 platform. First of all, providing them the speed as well as cost reduction because these service providers, they want to create their new, new business model. They want to reduce their cost. So that's where NFV comes in. Combined with SDN, which really makes the network programmable to deliver the new services. So if you combine the two concepts together, definitely they are complementary and there are a lot of benefits. Kashik, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. Telecom TV, where ICT connects.